if you're old enough to retire and you're thinking, fantastic, I'm going to get all of those jobs done, what happens when you finish the jobs? Well, Tony Ryan is with us and he's the uh, project manager for PBA FM Radio here. Welcome. Thank you, Malcolm. Time. You've had a, a fascinating background and you were, you were put out to pasture far too soon, it would appear. At age 52, I was in the ABC mm -hmm. and my whole level of middle managers were made redundant. Many of my colleagues in other states, there were, there were eight of us in my particular department and uh, we were all made redundant. Five of them at age 52 or thereabouts said, that's it, I'm going to retire, do the garden, do the house, do some overseas trip, trips, looking up, look after grandchildren. And I think within five years, they were all back in the workforce in yes. some way or other. I've seen that happen in my group of friends too. But you went back into an area that you were familiar with. Well, in actual fact, um, I came right here to this very studio and I worked here uh, in this university for about three years. So I made use of this studio, both for radio production and television production. We did a number of radio drama courses, television drama courses, script writing for radio and so on. I then got some work at Radio Adelaide and I worked there at the University of Adelaide for 10 years. Mm -hmm. My title there was Executive Producer Lifelong Learning. And I think that's important for what we're talking about now because the old concept of learning was you learnt at school, then you put all that behind you and you got on with life. But it's just not the way it is. Absolutely. It's not the way it is. I think as the older I get, the more I want to know. That's how I feel. Do you feel Indeed. the same? Well, I've enjoyed doing what I'm doing and I'm happy to talk about the details. Well, let's talk about what you're doing now okay. because that's the important thing. Let's talk about firstly the project that you're currently working on. Okay. I need to say first though that I left Adelaide University about eight years ago and I thought, ha ha, I'm going to really retire this time. So I went out to a small community radio station. Classical music is my background. My wife's a classical musician, so I know the repertoire quite well. So I ended up doing a number of um, uh, classical music programs. Then we saw some grants advertised and I thought, oh, well, give it one more try. Well, that was six years ago and we've had a reasonably constant uh, flow of grants. I produced a series... Just so that everyone understands what that means. So the grant is to give you a, a small package of cash yes. that you can pursue a specific subject. That's right. And the specific subject is... Well, the subject before the present been, one, yes. two, two before, um, I work with a group very close to here called the Friends of Black Hill and Morialta. Mm -hmm. And we produced a series of radio programs uh, about the work of the volunteers in a conservation park. But the interesting thing there was I determined that at that stage I needed to, I needed to know how to build a website. So with the help of my son who set it all up for me, he said, Dad, I'll come round next week and we'll start doing it. But by the time he came round, I'd worked out and I had three pages prepared. <laughs> and since then, every project I have, first Park Friends, then we moved into the Living Outback project where I went to many parts of South Australia and interstate recording people in outback areas and how they lived and what some of the issues were that were facing them, including things like um, drinking, which is a real problem, the recession, um, um, succession planning. That yeah, that's always an interesting yeah. one. And we got on some really tricky ones like male suicide in rural areas. Mm -hmm. um, did a fantastic interview with a guy who opened up fully to me, told me exactly, you know, where he'd come from and it was a really sad story, but he's a survivor. Do you think um, that's the hardest thing for men to sort of come to terms with, not being the perfect male throughout sure. their life? Sure, and work has a lot to do with that, or lack of work. Mm. I think we, and uh, with the greatest of respect to women, but I think we men have a particular issue in terms of right from the time we leave school, we, are, we become identified with our work. Well, and particularly in our age group, because we were sure. basically bred and brought up by our mothers to think that way. Mm. Um, it's very hard to break 
the habit of a lifetime, particularly of a childhood, uh, where we were watching our fathers and doing what our fathers did. Mm -hmm. I find now, having lost my father quite some yes. time ago, but I find myself really aping things my father did without even giving it a second thought. Mm -hmm. My father's very close to my thoughts at the moment because before he died, three years before he died, I wanted to interview him. I mean, I've got microphones, I've been interviewing people all my life almost. Mm. And he would never do it. He said, I don't like microphones. So one day in desperation, I gave him a 32-page exercise book and I said, <laughs> start writing. He said, no one will ever read it. But within a week, he'd filled four pages. Yes. Before he died, he'd filled three exercise books. And I've just finished putting it all together. It is a wonderful... It's 50 pages. Such an important it's thing. A wonderful Hand tribute on. to a great oh, man. Oh, absolutely. My dad and I spent probably three months together before he died. The same thing, but we, we talked a lot about um, his history with me or my history sure. with them, more to the point, and the history before that and being in the Second World War. Things that... Um, I was too young to, to be interested right. in before. Yeah. But the other project you've been working on? The current project is called In Search of a Good Death. Palliative care, comfort and meaning at life's end. Now, I could talk about it all night, but I know we don't have the time for that. Um, later in the program, we have a website address which we'll put up. But there are a number of issues, and everyone immediately thinks of euthanasia. Mm. But there are a whole lot of other issues, and we're not avoiding any of these issues. But 80% of people want to die in their own home. Mm. But statistics are pretty clear that between 20 and 30% of people actually achieve that. Many people are fearful of having someone, member of their family, in their own home dying. They think, oh, I can't cope with it. But I hope through this series that people will get an insight into what they can do. What are, what are some of the options? Mm. What, what are the services that are available? What have other people gone through? And the, the role of storytelling at end of life. I mean, one of the um, people I interviewed talked about old people, with respect, but older people in a nursing home sitting in the same chair every day, watching the same television yes. screen, and they do that. One of the interviewees said, or a professor actually from Sydney said, um, if you're dying, you are living. And why don't you live, even if it's only for a short time? Well, if you can, I if guess, you can. if you can. Absolutely. Yes, there are some circumstances where then it's sure. possible. I remember I was with my mum as she died, holding her hand, and I promised her that that's what I'd do. Mm -hmm. And I was lucky enough to be able to do that. Not that the thoughts were pleasant, sure. but I think those sorts of things we do need to talk about. It's, not, it's not that horrific. It's not that wonderful either. Mm. The angels don't come mm. and the heavens don't that's open, right. but... Yeah. The fact is you can make a promise mm. maybe and stick to mm. that, providing it's possible. But you're now working on another project as well that you've just got some more funding just for. Just got some more funding and this is an interesting one in terms of your viewers here. The, the topic is creative male ageing. And it's an in, you've got to think about it, but mm. uh, nonetheless, it's, it's going to be an interesting challenge. But how many men, and this brings us back to the beginning of our interview, how many men retire, um, sit in the garden? I remember being in the ABC in Sydney and being a middle manager, I ended up going to a number of farewell functions. And a very senior manager in the ABC, at his farewell function, when I asked him what he was going to do next week, he said, I have no idea. And I found that really very sad mm. that his whole life was his work. And, and when he walked stopped. out on Friday night, uh, Friday afternoon, Monday morning, what was the rest of his life going to be? He said, I don't know. Uh, that's scary. We've got some pictures here of um, some guys and some areas out in the bush. Where is this? Uh, th well, this is not out in the bush. This is the radio station at Salisbury. Oh, a colourful building in the there. Bush. That's in the <laughs> bush. The colourful building there is the small studio okay. out at uh, Salisbury. Didn't, out know, at I didn't know that existed. Right. This was a photograph taken up uh, north of Hawker. Mm -hmm. And uh, someone sent this in to me. It's a rather nice photo. I rather right. like that one. But it certainly illustrates the, uh, the landscape uh, where I did a lot of recording. 
This one came from someone, I think, in Queensland. But I thought that a really special photograph. Isn't that fabulous? Yep. Yes. Just the, the whole rural setting there. So, and with the, the boy with the duck. That's a lovely one. Isn't it? Yep. I needed to get approval to use that. And having... these shots were taken because... They were taken as part of a national competition, um, and I was part of that, and um, I selected from that these, these photographs. In Search of a Good Death, this is a long story, but the guy on the, uh, on the edge of the screen was given six months to live. He took a conscious decision when they knew that further treatment was of no avail. The family sat down and said, how are we going to spend your last three or four months? He said, I want to travel with my son. So they left Brisbane, they went out um, through Quilpie and then down the Birdsville track and then down to Adelaide. The rest of his family flew to Adelaide and then the whole family travelled back to Brisbane through Broken Hill, which was where that boy, the son, was actually born. Now it's that's a kind of journey. Yeah, it's journey. about planning, isn't it's it? It's a journey that th that family will never forget. Thank you for talking to us about that. It's just wonderful. It's We've all got to be very conscious of not losing ourselves when we get to an age that we think retirement is what we have to do because who said we had to stop? Tony, thank you Indeed. so much. Thank you, Malcolm. Much appreciated.